Okay, so the recording has started and uh, we are ready to go whenever you are, Keith. Fantastic. Good morning, everyone. I am calling this meeting to order at 9.33 a.m. Uh, my name is Keith Opsted and I'm the new chair of the City of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture Public Art Committee. We are going to do a quick roll call to confirm committee member attendance. When I call your name, please unmute your mic and say present. Also, a little bit of forgiveness here. If I mispronounce anybody's name, I will get a phonetic spelling for you at, at some point in the very near future, all right? So, Commissioner Fritz Friedman. Here. Anthony Graham. Here. Dr. Melinda G. Yen. Uh, G. Yen, here. Wayne Holton. Here. Commissioner Abe Hughes. Uh, looks like Abe is trying to join, but um, I'll let. I'll come we'll back confirm. to him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Alessandra Moctezuma. Here. Thank you. Francisco M. Commissioner Imani Robinson. Present. Dr. Ong Jun Park. And Denise Rogers. Here. Excellent. Uh, did we get Abe? Um, yeah, we're gonna, we're trying one more time or we'll keep trying until we get it. <laughs> I'll keep an eye on the attendance list. Yeah. Thank you, uh, your attendance has been noted. Also joining us today is Commission for Arts and Culture staff, including Chief of Civic Art Strategies, Christine Jones, Senior Public Art Manager, Chuck Miller, and Civic Art Project Manager, Dr. Laura Bullock. Before we get into today's agenda, I'm going to call on Chuck Miller to run down uh, some of the guidelines for today's meeting. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Opsted, and good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to all the new Public Art Committee members. So a reminder that this meeting is a Zoom webinar, and members of the public may join the meeting as webinar attendees to provide virtual non-agenda and agenda comment in real time. A reminder to note the buttons on the control bar at the bottom of the Zoom window to mute and unmute and turn your camera on and off. Please remember to stay muted when you are talking and to unmute yourself when you speak. Please keep your chat window opens, open at all times. You will be using the chat to signal that you'd like to speak. Uh, please refrain from using the hand raising indicator and instead type speak in the chat window for the record and chair obstacle in order. Uh, and finally, a reminder to please refrain from using the meeting chat for anything other than signaling like that you'd like to speak in order to comply with the Brown Act. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Opstead. And just wanted to note, Abe, uh, are you present? I'm seeing a picture uh, that's blank and he's unmuted. So hopefully if you're able to be there, maybe under the comments, you let us know, because I will be monitoring that. Okay, perfect. God, having trouble with audio right now. Okay, so we're gonna continue forward, but note that he is present. Okay. Uh, we will now move on to non-public, non-agenda public comment. The public was invited to submit public comment on agenda and non-agenda items via a web form accessible through the agenda and the commission's website. Members of the public may also join this meeting as webinar attendees. If members of the public have submitted comment in writing via the web form, staff will read aloud the public comment submitted per city public comment protocol. I will call on Chuck to read aloud any non-agenda public comment or to call on any attendees who would like to provide a comment. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Opstead. Uh, we did not receive any uh, uh, non-agenda public comment in writing. Uh, to those members of the public in attendance, uh, please click the button to raise your hand to indicate if you would like to comment and I will enable to, you to speak and send you a prompt to unmute yourself in order. When I call your name, please state your name for the record and you will have three minutes to provide comment, uh, after which you will be placed on mute again. So to those members of the public, um, please press the hand raise button now if you'd like to provide comment. Uh, and if you are joining by phone, please press star nine to raise your hand. 
Uh, I will call on you by the last four digits of your phone number. When I call on you, press star six to unmute yourself. Please raise your hand now if you'd like to provide non-agenda public comment. And I am seeing none. Back to you, Pete. Well, I'd like to welcome mostly everyone that's about quite a few new committee members and extend gratitude uh, to those committee members who are still with us for your continued service. At this first public art committee meeting in a while since February, uh, I uh, nothing new to report uh, from the past month's meeting of the full commission. I would like to take this opportunity to go around and just do a brief introduction. And I'll start with myself. At least that way I know a little bit more about everyone before, besides just our bios. Uh, then I'll call on your name and we'll just go in the same order of which I did earlier uh, and just for them there. So just a couple, a couple sentences about who you are. And so I'll start off with myself. Uh, my name is Keith Opsted. I grew up in San Diego. I am a second generation educator. Uh, I'm an artist and art educator and have taught for 27 years and had over 7,000 students. So I'm also a working artist where during the summer I would paint murals and I would teach my students the art of business. Uh, and it was a really fantastic experience and many of the students are working artists here in San Diego. So that's just a little bit about me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next person. So please unmute your mic and tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, Commissioner Fritz Friedman, let's start with you. Thank you. My name is Fritz Friedman. Um, I, um, I'm from Boston, uh, Massachusetts, born in Manila, raised in Boston. Um, I'm a communications and uh, a communications manager, and um, I now live here in San Diego. I've been here for now two years, um, and it's a pleasure to be able to work with everyone on this committee. Thank you. We'll next go on to Anthony. Hi everyone, I'm Anthony Graham. I am also a San Diego native um, and I am the associate curator at the Museum of Contemporary Art San Diego where I've been for the past seven years uh, this month, um, which is kind of unreal. Um, and yeah, really glad to serve on this committee um, and, and be part of public art in our city. Thank you, Dr. Melinda. Again. Oh yeah, you got it. I'm Hi. trying, I'm trying. You got it. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Melinda Guillen. I grew up in Las Vegas. Um, I moved to San Diego over 10 years ago to do my PhD in art history theory and criticism at UCSD. I'm currently there as a writing professor. Um, I also write and organize. Um, I'm really big on feminist theory. Uh, that's one of my areas of specialization, post-American, uh, post-war American contemporary art. Um, what else do I do? I make zines. I'm really big into DIY culture. Um, yeah, that's about it. And I really enjoy being, even though we're on Zoom, I really enjoy being part of the committee. Well, thank you very much. Uh, next we'll have Wayne. Good morning. Uh, my name is Wayne Holton. I'm a architect, one of the principals at Doma Studio Architecture. Uh, we have our offices up in Bankers Hill. I grew up in Minnesota, um, but have moved but moved to San Diego back in 1980, so I've been here a long time. Um, we have incorporated public art in some of our civic projects. Uh, most recently, the South Mission Beach Lifeguard Station um, and a piece with Roman DeSalvo. And we do a lot of sacred space, and so we incorporate a lot, uh, a number of, of liturgical art pieces within our designs. And uh, looking forward to, to participating um, on the committee and, and as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner A. Hughes. You can click your mic and to unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear now? You're set. Perfect. All right, my name is A. Abe Hughes. Wait, hold on a second. Can you hear now? Yep. Great. My name is Abe Hughes. I'm a, a new commissioner representing District 1, which is the La Jolla Del Mar uh, University City area. Uh, huge appreciator of art. Uh, me and my wife have been collecting for about 30 years um, and involved, been involved in art institutions and other places we've lived, Chicago, Philadelphia, and um, here I'm on the ICA board, um, and um, really my primary interest is is to make sure that San Diego appreciates as much as possible all of the arts, 
and so happy to be part of this committee. Thank you very much. Commissioner Alessandra Moctezuma. Good morning. I'm Alessandra Moctezuma. I'm originally from Mexico City. I grew up in Los Angeles. I um, started working a public art with Chicana muralist Judith Baca as her painting assistant. And I worked for five years as a public arts uh, manager for the MTA uh, in Los Angeles, supervising large scale um, uh, installations of art for the subway and the light rail. So, so I have a, quite a bit of experience in public art. I've been living in San Diego for 20 years. I moved here uh, to teach at San Diego Mesa College, where I'm also the gallery director. I curate exhibitions and I run the museum studies program. And I just recently got back in, in touch with Judy and she and curated a retrospective of her work up at the Museum of Latin American Art in Long Beach. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Let's go on to Commissioner Imani Robinson. Good morning. Uh, I am a native San Diego. My name is Imani Robinson. I am a business owner as a cosmetologist. I have a degree in communications, radio, television, and film. I am a facilitator for um, Mind Treasures, which is a financial literacy organization. Uh, I live in Mountain View and I chair Mountain View Rec. I sit on the board for um, San Diego Parks Foundation. And um, I'm also affiliated with um, La Jolla's um, advisory, um, leadership advisory um, council as well. And I chair Mountain View um, Parks and Rec. And I love um, equity in public spaces. So that is why I'm here. Thank you very much. And finally, last but not least, Denise Rogers. Hello, good morning. I'm Denise Rogers, also a native San Diegan. Um, I've been, I'm also a professor at Mesa College. I've been teaching for the district for over 20 years. I teach art history and I focus primarily on um, diaspora art, um, African-American art, art of um, cultures who are Say outside of the West, as, as it's commonly referred to. Um, I also um, manage our World Cultures Collection, which has, they have pieces from the continent of Africa, Asia, the Americas. I am also a member of the San Diego Mesa College Foundation. I serve on the board, as well as the Visual and Performing Arts Academy Board. And I was just appointed to the San Diego Museum of Art Board of Trustees, a little busy. But um, I'm primarily teaching, but um, I would like to um, invite you all to see a show that I curated at the San Diego Central Library, Echoes of Africa, where I collaborated with contemporary artists, and then I incorporated pieces from the Mesa College collection. And I would like to say I was on this committee a few years ago and had to, left because, had to leave because of responsibilities with school, but I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to see you all. Well, welcome back, Denise. And when, I uh, do a quick little plug for you, when, how, uh, what's the dates that the exhibit will be running? It's up now and it will run through August 20th. Making note of it right now. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. And thank you all very much. Looking forward to meeting you all in person at some point sooner, hopefully rather than later, but thank you all for your service. We're gonna go ahead and move on now. And I hope everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes from the February 4th, 2022 meeting. Um, a couple a couple things, this is a little different just because normally, you know, it's, it's a continuation of the previous meeting and attendees, so I just wanted to preface it with that. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve the minutes as they are? If you would, please type speak on the chat window, and when I call on you, verbally state your name and make your motion. I'd like to call on Fritz. Hi, I, I second. Oh, you have to first it. First. Oh, I, I first it. Okay. I have to accept, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Would anybody like to second the motion? Go ahead and type speak in the chat box. Denise? I'll second. Thank you very much. Uh, so we had first with the first, and then we had Denise Rogers with a second. Thank you both very much. Would anybody like to, uh, we now have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If you would like to speak, please type speak on the chat window.
Okay, I do not see any additional comments. Now we will take a vote. I will call your name and you will respond out loud with yay, nay, or abstain. Remember that you do not need to have been present at the February meeting to vote or discuss. You're just voting to approve the minutes. When I call your name, unmute your mic and once again say yay, nay, or abstain. Commissioner Friedman? Yay. Anthony Graham? Yay. Dr. Melinda Guillen? Yay. Wayne Holton? Yay. Commissioner Abe Hughes? Yay. Commissioner Alessandra Moctezuma? I apologize, I lost connection for a second. Is this for the minutes? Yes, yay, nay, or abstain? Well, I wasn't here at that time, but I guess yay. Okay, thank you very much, duly noted. Uh, Francisco Eme, not present. Commissioner Imani Robinson. Yay. Dr. An Yung Park, not present. Denise Rogers. Yay. And my vote is abstain. Thank you, Chuck. Please read any public comment for this item that was submitted in writing and call on any attendees that you would like to provide comment for this item. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Upstead. Um, there was no comment submitted in writing for this item. Um, for those members, please press the hand raise button now if you would like to provide comment on this item. If you're calling in, please press star nine to raise your hand and press and uh, press star six to unmute yourself when I uh, call out the last four digits of your number. I'm seeing none. Okay, so our next action is the temporary exhibit proposal from the new Children's Museum. Los Trompos by Hector Esrare. Did I pronounce that properly? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. Uh, now we'll do a conflict of interest disclosures. Uh, the recommendation affects contracts with the new Children's Museum and artist Hector S. Rawe. Please assess whether you have any conflicts, conflicts to disclose. When I call your name, if you have no conflicts, state no conflicts. If you do have a conflict, please recuse yourself from the discussion and voting on the action item. Commissioner Fritz Friedman. No conflict. Anthony Graham. No conflict. Dr. Melinda Guillen. No conflict. Wayne Holton. No conflict. Commissioner Abe Hughes. No conflict. Commissioner Alexandra Moctezuma. No conflict. Chuck, quick question for protocol. Do I need to call on people who are not in attendance? Uh, no. If, if it's been confirmed. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Imani Robinson. No conflict. Denise R Rogers. No conflict. And I have no conflict. I now like to call on Chuck to provide an overview of the proposal and the staff recommendation. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Opsted. So um, city staff has received a temporary exhibit application for an installation from the new Children's Museum. Uh, the applicant is proposing an exhibit of artwork by Mexico City-based artist Hector Esrawe. The artwork consists of six varying styles of spinning sculptures with nylon straps that create a webbing support system over steel frames, allowing visitors to sit and stand on the structures while they are while they spin. And uh, incidentally, this this uh, exhibit has had multiple manifestations in various venues and in the public sphere. Um, uh, this image um, being indicative of that. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so uh, uh, the exhibit, the exhibition is proposed for uh, Children's Museum Park and the sculptures will be distributed throughout the turf area of the park. City evaluated the application utilizing criteria contained in the City of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture Department instruction. Um, and the results of staff's analysis include uh, regarding public safety, if the exhibit is installed and maintained properly within the proposed location of the park, 
<clears throat> i.e. city approved methods and materials safe for the public. It is unlikely to pose hazards or threats to public safety or public health or is unlikely to pose any potential liability to the city in any other way. Uh, the applicant would be solely responsible for the funding of the exhibit. This includes, but is not limited to, insurance installation, maintenance and conservation, deinstallation, and site restoration. Uh, the exhibit would provide an aesthetic and cultural experience for residents and visitors to the Convention Center Harbor Drive Marina area of downtown and the New Children's Museum. <clears throat> and activate and enhance the area surrounding Museum Park, as well as balancing urbanization and development with humanizing elements. The exhibit may stimulate discussion in the exchange of uh, ideas about art in the neighborhood due to the highly visible location. Hector Esraue is a Mexico City-based contemporary artist whose work in the public realm is internationally recognized. And the proposed exhibit exemplifies artistic merit and quality of workmanship. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, those were a little out of order, but uh, just going back to um, the, uh, the designs of the particular sculptures themselves. Um, so the exhibit is to be sited in the center of the triangular turf area of Children's Museum Park, south of West Island Street in the main entrance of the new Children's Museum building. The city is patrolled by the San Diego Police Department and the applicant has indicated that museum staff will regularly monitor the site. The applicant has also indicated that custom covers will be installed over the artwork elements during the nighttime hours. Um, if the exhibit is authorized, it will be formalized in a temporary exhibit of artwork maintenance and removal agreement between the applicant and the city. And the exhibit is proposed to be on view from mid-September uh, this year to late January, 2023. Um, next slide, please. Uh, the applicant has indicated that the artist was chosen on a long-term curatorial research process uh, from a short list of potential commissions. The applicant has indicated that the criteria for the artist selection were based on previous work in the public realm, as well as conceptual interests that reflect the diversity of the San Diego region. Um, evaluation criteria you will use to decide whether to recommend to the commission authorization of the proposed exhibit may include some or all of those given in the City of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture Department instruction uh, linked in the staff report and uh, provided via email to the committee members yesterday. Um, the executive director of the commission will consider the recommendation from city staff, the public art committee, the commission, and any other pertinent stakeholders before making the final decision on whether to authorize the proposed exhibit. Uh, next slide, please. So the staff recommendation is to recommend to the City of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture that the executive director of the commission approve the temporary exhibit titled Los Trompos, consisting of an exhibit of artwork by artist Hector Esraue for temporary exhibit at in uh, New Children's Museum Park. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. I do not see any comments in the chat room. Does anybody have any questions or comments for Chuck? I have a, a fast question. What does Los Trampos mean? Um, it means um, spinning top. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. The children's spinning top. Okay. Thank you, Alessandra. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, Chuck, so much for the presentation. I will now request any public comment for this agenda item. Chuck, please read any public comment that was submitted in writing and call on any attendees who would like to make or provide public comment. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Upstead. Uh, no comment was submitted in writing to those members of the public in attendance. Uh, please press the hand raise button now if you would like to provide comment. For those uh, calling in, press, press star nine to raise your hand. I will call on you by the last four digits of your phone number and press star six to unmute yourself. Uh, please press the hand raise button now if you'd like to provide comment. I am seeing none. 
Well, thank you, Chuck. Now what we're gonna do is, would anyone like to move to make a motion to recommend to the commission that the executive director approve the temporary exhibit? If you would, please type speak on the chat window and verbally state your name and make your motion. Alessandra? Um, Commissioner Alessandra Moctezuma and I move that we approve the proposal for Los Trompos from the New Children's Museum based on rec the recommendation from the City of San Diego Commission of Arts and Culture. Thank you so much, Alessandra. Would anybody like to second the motion? Anthony? Second the motion, Anthony okay. Graham. Duly noted. Uh, we now have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? So once we have done those two, then there is discussion amongst the, the committee members. If anybody has anything, go ahead and please type speak in the chat room and we'll call on you. Okay, I do not see any additional comments, Chuck. So we now have a second and a first. Uh, what we'd like to do is to now take a vote. I will call your name and you will respond out loud with yay, nay, or abstain. Commissioner Friedman. Yay. Anthony Graham. Yay. Dr. Guillen. Yay. Wayne Holton. Yay. Commissioner Abe Hughes. Yay. Commissioner Alessandra Moctezuma. Yay. Commissioner Imani Robinson. Yay. Denise Rogers. Yay. And my vote is a yay. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to call on Christine Jones to provide the staff reports. All right. So first of all, I just want to say hi. It's nice to see everybody. I know it's been a while. Um, so it's wonderful to see you all by it's uh, virtual today. <laughs> um, we do hope to have something in person so we can all kind of reconnect um, and meet each other, right? Since there's so many new members. So welcome new members to the Public Art Committee. And of course, our returning members as well. Um, we're re-returning members in some cases here. So, um, we have been, uh, we're, well, obviously we're really looking forward to working with you all this year. And so what we wanted to do today is just give you a few staff updates and kind of just kind of bring you up to speed on some of the things staff have been working on over the, the spring. Um, we've, we've had a pretty busy agenda um, between uh, Park Social, which launched in May, to some um, new commission. So um, new commission of work that's been popping up as well as a lot of installation work with some of the um, acquisitions that were purchased through the SD Practice Initiative. So we're gonna give you a little update on some of those items today and certainly wanna start with Park Social. So just to give you a little kind of overview um, for those of you who are new to the pack, uh, might be new to hearing about this initiative. Park Social is the citywide initiative to introduce social specific artwork uh, by San Diego area artists and collectives into the San Diego's wonderful park system. So it's, it is one of two initiatives that the city launched um, to support artists during kind of the pandemic and make them part of the city's reopening. So this uh, park social initiative launched uh, back in May and it features 18 projects by again, San Diego area artists and collectives. And it really, um, is creating newly commissioned temporary works that really connect with park goers and parks um, directly. And we have, we're featuring over 28 parks, 50 plus activations, and again, 18 projects. So a lot of the projects have multiple iterations that they're doing over time, over the course of uh, the next six months. So the initiative ends in November 20th. And one of the things we want to make sure is on your calendar is save the date for Exploration Day, as well as all the other projects going on in the month of July. We have a really jam-packed July. Um, we have, uh, we'll be hosting on July 16th, Park Social Exploration Day, 
There'll be nine participating projects happening at that day as part of Park Social. So you'll be able to, to drive throughout the city and check out a temporary installation with a unique view of the city. Um, you'll be able to participate in art making, community events and celebrations, and even take partake in a marathon reading of novels if you so choose. So um, I will share the links in the chat so you all are aware of these events and I would encourage you to come. They're very um, fun, engaging. Uh, I love what's happening with just the unexpected engagement with park goers. It's been really fun to see um, that happening. So what I'd like to do now is uh, ask Chuck to, to kind of give you a little bit of a recap of some of the projects that have happened to date with Park Social. And then Laura is, and, and he's also going to brief us a little bit on the SD practice installations. And then Laura is going to update us on a couple of the commissioned artworks um, that have been happening that are newly part of the city's collection. So I'll hand it over to Chuck. Sorry, fumbling with my windows. Uh, thank you, Christine. Um, yes, uh, uh, as Christine mentioned um, about Park Social, I'll, I'll just note that uh, the kickoff was this past May 21st. So we're a little bit more than a month in uh, to the initiative as a whole. And about, um, uh, about a third of the projects have had manifestations thus far. So we're still looking forward to the bulk of things happening. Some of those projects will continue um, iterations throughout the remainder of the initiative into November. So uh, next slide, please, Lara. Um, so this was from the, the one of the projects that manifested at the kickoff event, uh, a, a project called Walking the Wall by Timothy Murdoch. Um, it was hard to see the, this, basically this wall was assembled and disassembled or so, so assembled from the front, disassembled from the back. So over the course of three hours, it basically snaked its way through uh, um, fault line park in East Village downtown. Um, it, it also incorporated salsa dancing. Um, it was really engaging and fun, um, but also a good workout for all those who participated. Uh, incidentally, the the uh, the units that comprise the wall are all constructed from uh, pallets, um, which have been utilized in shipping um, um, across the border here. So, uh, so the work is sort of a commentary on that as well. Um, that that will be manifesting again at at a North Park Community Park uh, on Exploration Day on July sixteenth. Um, and then again, at another location we're working on in Balboa Park uh, later this fall. So next slide, please. Yes, yeah, so this is this is part of Yvette Roman and Shana Ray Dowling's project, Collective Memory. Um, the, who, they've conducted two weaving workshops in San Isidro Community Park. Um, and uh, each, so these, uh, these basically rugs slash picnic blankets that are being woven here are all from uh, all these strips of material come from uh, uh, fabric that was sourced from the community or discarded clothing that was sourced from the community um, that sort of embodies a collective memory if you will um, and uh, the the final installation will be on uh, exploration day july 16th at san isidro community park which will include these these all of these woven blankets kind of set out as as a big communal picnic, um, as well as a uh, sort of a dome structure that um, will include reflections of the past two plus years uh, of the pandemic. So um, it's been really really fun to and and it's been a very actually relaxing workshops that have happened in San Isidro Park um, over the past month. Uh, so it's hard to encapsulate everything that's going on with um, Artist Collective Brian and Ryan's project. They've basically made themselves a residence residency via this commission at um, Choyas Lake Park. Um, and so uh, they've sort of they've sort of set up shop. They've actually kind of adopted a sort of an underused bait shop as the hub of their residency. Um, this was one of the um, 
they they've been doing a number of things at the park, which is is a really fascinating place. There's for so many reasons, as Brian and Ryan have sort of revealed. Uh, part of their practice involves a sort of almost a kind of comedy duo where they assign where they uh, assume personas. Um, and this is just an image from one of the uh, one of the projects they were working on on um, uh, um, on the opening weekend, where ultimately the tin can phones were the sh the string was extended over the entire breadth of the lake, um, and there was also a workshop in making tin can phones with visitors. Uh, so this has been a really really fun project to follow along with, and and various things. Uh, there will be an installation culminating everything that uh, with this project uh, later this fall. So this has been fun. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so Ingram and Marisol's project um, in collaboration with the passerby at Otai Valley Regional Park. Um, this was a workshop from opening weekend and you can see one of the sort of results of the workshop. The artists have constructed three spheres, if you will, from that are sort of reflective of materials throughout the park. And they're sort of in hidden locations throughout this huge uh, open space regional park, which is incidentally the Otai River Valley um, that kind of, uh, uh, a little, that runs along the south side of Chula Vista and the north side of Otai Mesa and San Isidro. Um, and so over the court, the, the way that these, um, spheres as interventions change over the course of the of the uh, initiative will be documented by them and you can follow along with the project virtually uh, via the the uh, city's website um, so uh, and then uh, this has had uh, two iterations thus far um, this is Keenan Hartson's Honeycomb Harmonies, um, an installation that uh, he made in collaboration. The also picked, uh, pictured here are sort of homemade xylophones. Um, uh, and this will be manifesting in parks throughout District 5. So thus far, it's been at uh, Scripps Ranch Community Park and South Creek Community Park near Poway. Um, anticipated for Rolling Hills Park in on July 16th, Exploration Day. So come out and um, play in, in the <laughs> Keenan's uh, musical playground, if you will. Uh, so it, this has been a really fun project to watch manifest. So this installation is, is um, pseudo portable. It takes some time to set up, but it can be manifest in, in all these different locations. Um, and so uh, Roberto Salas's um, tribute to Paleteros. Um, this is, uh, these are giant kind of Palatero or uh, Paleta signs or uh, popsicle signs that, that are uh, uh, colored with reflective vinyl. Um, these are installed along Governor Drive in Stanley Park, as well as uh, University Gardens Park further east in Governor Drive. Um, so it, you can see one prominently here, if you squint your eyes further into the distance, there's about uh, uh, eight or nine that are installed um, along Stanley Park, um, uh, uh, basically the, the eastbound lane uh, on Governor Drive in University City. Um, this is uh, Art Builds, um, another artist collective, a project called Reflection. Uh, so these, and this was installed, so this had a two-week installation that just culminated um, uh, um, um, this past week, um, but there's another installation of this anticipated for the fall, so stay tuned. If you missed it this time, you'll have a chance to see it again. Um, this, it's basically these, uh, these interactive um, mirrored units. So the, there's a flat mirror on one side, a convex mirror on one side and a concave mirror on the other side of each one of these units that the public can come up to and spin. There's also a programmed LED light. Um, so, af so after dark, it has the, it, the lights are sort of responsive and, and uh, are, are, Sort of in this is uh, this picture incidentally was when they were programming the lights and kind of tweaking it. So um, 
yeah, in any case, uh, this was at, at Ellen Brown, uh, Ellen Scripps Browning Park in La Jolla near La Jolla Cove. It will be back in La Jolla this fall. So, um, yeah, so those, those are all of the projects that have um, manifested um, in Park Social thus far. And like I said, that's, a, that's about six projects. So a third of the projects um, uh, out of a total of 18. Some of those are continuing. Um, um, or in fact, all of those pictured will have, uh, will have additional iterations. Um, and uh, a bunch of new projects will be kicking off on the 16th. So really hope to see everybody out there then. I guess with that, um, um, maybe just, or maybe I'll hand it off to Laura and then she can hand it back to me um, uh, to talk about SD practice. So, Thanks, so, um, so now I'm just gonna talk about some projects that have recently been completed or are currently in um, process and just some kind of status updates of some other projects. So kind of a plethora of things. So in this slide, what we're looking at is um, are some images of our department initiated project called Here Comes the Neighborhood San Isidro. So um, it's two thirds um, complete in terms of installation. So the top image is of Wendell Queen's artwork entitled Compass. And so it's a decorative frieze. We're seeing the south side of the San Ysidro Civic Center. There's also one on the north side, um, which faces the park that Shana and Yvette have their projects in. We saw a slide of their work earlier. Um, and it's inspired by, you know, just it's informed by kind of cultural, um, the cultural heritage of people in the neighborhood, the artist's personal cultural heritage. He comes from a German background, so Sharon Schnitta, and kind of a combination of, of using that kind of paper cutting technique um, with like Papel Picado and kind of merging, the merging of culture and just kind of exploring what that means. Um, it's really a nice colorful addition to the neighborhood. It really like creates this vibrant punch. So I. I know San Isidro is really far away, but it's, I think it's worth it to drive down there and just check out all these projects. So the second slide, you can't really see the project, but it's, um, it's representing Fallen Fruits um, Public Fruit Park project, which is another really cool um, project that's right, like, right across the street from Wendell's. So with this, it's a, it's a public fruit park, and the idea is there are trees that will blossom year round. So people in the neighborhood, any time of year, can just go to the park and get free fruit. So the goal with this project is just to kind of make you kind of consider what, it is, what a neighborhood is, what it is to kind of relate to each other, and um, just kind of reimagine public space. How can public space act? Does it have to be a place where you can just you just sit down, or can it be like an active place where you share and you engage with each other? So that's kind of the goal in a nutshell <laughs> of that project. And then the project on the bottom um, is by is Janelle Iglesias's project, and it's still in the fabrication um, phase. So we're um, anticipating the installation of that project to be. Um, in the fall of this year, 2022. And um, so it's it acts as kind of like a, a drop shadow gateway that connects an arts corridor in San Ysidro. There's a lot of murals in this arts corridor. And then it also kind of connects to the buyer um, trolley stop. So it's a really kind of heavily trafficked area. And um, when standing kind of under this sign, if you look south, you can see kind of Tijuana in the background. So it's kind of like a symbolic kind of poetic um, gesture, just kind of connecting kind of the two spaces and just considering kind of San Diego's relationship to Tijuana and um, just the sharing of cultures again. If I can move slides, I would. Okay. Okay, so another project that is um, currently um, being installed, but will be completed soon um, in a few months, again in the fall of this year, 
um, is the Civic Center mural project by um, Collective Magpie. The art, it's an art, artist duo in this picture. Melinda Barnadas is the artist who is actually installing this artwork. And um, the, this mural is meant to be representative of an inclusive San Diego. So there's lots of elements within it that sort of allude to this theme in different ways. So some of the ways that she sort of gets at this overall theme is exploring kind of specific issues of biodiversity within San Diego, the civic nature in general of San Diego, and just kind of transformative possibilities um, within San Diego. And also a big kind of component of it was um, interacting with youth in San Diego. So she worked with students at King Chavez High School, which is, if you know the area, the Civic Center is just right around the corner. And they did a lot of brainstorming um, on just kind of ideas of what it means to live in San Diego and just kind of experiences as a citizen. And um, as with all of our projects, we did a, lo a lot of community engagement just to get feedback um, from the whole of San Diego, um, particularly with this project, because it is sited in the Civic Center, which is such an important um, place. And it's been cool while she's been installing it. There's a lot of um, tuna fishermen that come to, I guess, the Civic Center. So there's like a component of her mural that kind of focuses on the tuna fishing industry. And it, it's been really meaningful. She said some, um, some people have been moved to tears by the mural. So it's already having an impact. Um, it's really beautiful. This little slide doesn't do it justice. So um, it's pretty much, it looks finished. She just has to do some detail work. So if you're down there, check it out. And then this is a project. Um, this is one of our CIP projects. So this is a different type of project, um, CIP project. Just for like the new um, committee members are usually, they're tied to larger projects such as park projects in this case, and we'll see another one coming up. Um, so this one is tied to an overall children's um, park project and the artwork is by local artist, Miki Iwasaki. It's entitled Petrichor, which means this, it refers to the smell of rain after a long period, a long dry spell. So um, Petra is like from the Greek meaning rock and like ichor is means like the fluid flowing through the veins of immortal. So it's interesting. Um, so the way this artwork works, it will be kind of sited in a location um, in the park that has trees near it. So it kind of, it, you'll kind of stumble upon it. And as the light changes in the sky, the shadows on the ground will move and change. And um, it will be lit at night. So it'll kind of serve as a beacon in the park at night and also provide some you know, safety through lighting. So there's a lot of um, aspects to this work. Okay, so here's another CIP project. So this one, unlike Children's Park that's tied to a park, this one's tied to an overall library project. So it's an immersive terracotta uh, tile installation in um, the uh, one of two courtyards in this library. And it, again, it's by Janelle Iglesias. So um, this project will act like a word find overall, and it will involve um, words that come from um, the various peoples that have inhabited this land. So there will be word, Kumeyaay words, English words, and Spanish words. And she's working with an ethnobotanist at UCSD um, just to really kind of be, get accurate, um, accurate language, accurate history. You know, she's really taking the time to make sure that it's um, accurate and reflective of all the words. Will, uh, many of the words will be reflective of the local and native um, plants in the area. So that's why she's working with the ethnobotanist. And then also within the library, they have, um, they call it an idea lab. And there is kind of a paleontology um, an archaeology focus. So some of the words will reference that as well. And um, you can see in the slide, it's an alphabet, but it's kind of an abstract alphabet. So the idea is you might be sitting in the courtyard and looking at the wall, and then all of a sudden these words start emerging. Um, and there will also be a booklet inside the library um, that kind of helps you find the words in 
case you're not one to just sit there and discover on your own. So <laughs> pretty cool. And then, so I guess now I'll turn it over to Chuck or Christine to talk about SD practice. Oh, one more thing. Sorry, with um, this, there's a groundbreaking soon. It's going to be um, July 15th. So, so this project is, that means that's just the beginning of the overall library build. And so this project will um, eventually be realized in, uh, at the end of 2023. And I'll just add one quick thing. Um, we'll be sending an invitation to the groundbreaking to all of you soon. So stay tuned. It's, um, you know, it's obviously optional, but we want to make sure you guys are included if you'd like to attend. Thanks, Lara and Christine. And I'll, I'm, I'll just sort of conclude our staff presentation with um, just a quick note, since we've last met, we've um, it's been exciting that we've had a, a number of opportunities to continue installing SD practice acquisitions throughout the city in, in at least their semi-permanent homes. Um, so uh, including the city administration building, that was a really, um, that was a great opportunity and we're really excited about what we've been able to install there. Um, so I'll just go through a couple of selections. I wish I could go through everything. Um, do do uh, uh, tune into sdcivicartcollection.com uh, for so we will we'll be regularly updating the locations of the acquisitions um, as they're installed. Uh, next slide, Lara. Um, so the uh, reception desk. So the the detail from the previous. Uh, slide was Amanda Kechadori in central San, San Diego, which is now installed over the reception desk at the city administration building, um, as well as Allison Weiss's Weather Saves the Day neon adjacent. Uh, and so here is uh, John Morales's uh, Chicano Park from the Neighbor series installed in the uh, elevator lobby to council chambers in the city administration building. Next slide. So this is, um, and so there are quite a few other install new selections, but um, this is uh, Bill Mosley's um, intersection or inter. Um, forgive me, I'm probably botching the title right now. A painting triptych. This is in a study room at uh, the Mission Valley Library, <laughs> and uh, just another view of the of the lobby. Um, so the the Woolies reflective sun, you can sort of make out in the chaos in the background, but you can also see here Timothy Murdoch's Cedar Fire and Farshid Basmandigan's Mix It Up, um, two sculptures that are installed in the lobby uh, for the city administration building. Um, so it's been really exciting to be able to bring contemporary artwork from San Diego artists to these prominent public locations and um, Thanks again to Alessandra and Anthony who are here today <laughs> for all your help on the panel. Several years later, um, you can see where things are finally ending up, so. Uh, thank you, Laura, Christine, and Chuck for that extensive and thorough uh, report. Uh, I love the comment about it taking time. And you know, oftentimes because of the processes that we have to go through on this committee, it does take sometimes years to, to, to see the, the it come to fruition. But thank you everyone for all your hard work. Chuck, were there any additional public comments for any of the items that were just reported? Uh, so um, no comments received in writing. Those members of the public in attendance, uh, please press the hand raise button now if you'd like to provide comment. For those calling in, please press star nine to raise your hand and star seven or a star six to unmute yourself. I am seeing none. Okay, thank you, sir. A uh, couple of things. Uh, Christine put in a couple of links in the chat for you. If you click on them, it'll probably make your Zoom window disappear. So you might wanna wait just a minute to do that before we check out. If not, you'll have to click back on the Zoom just to have some technical difficulties. Uh, and I wanted to publicly thank Laura, Chuck, and Christine for all your hard work. We all remember where we were on March 13th, 2020. Uh, it was a Friday the 13th, it was a full moon, and we had no idea that the world would shut down the following Monday. 
Uh, there are so many parts of our society that actually came to a screeching halt. And I just wanted to just say how, how appreciative I am of all the hard work that you have done to carry the torch, keep our community engaged, keep our artists engaged and working. Um, and what I really like about some of the temporary exhibits is it's, it's in a safe outdoor space. And so since we were not able to go into the interior buildings, uh, it, it gave people a safe way and a safe outlet to be creative and experience different cultures and, and, and continue to be stimulated. So thanks to all of you for all your hard work. Uh, I know we still have a lot of work to do, but I wanted to comment and, and the entire staff is just working incredibly hard. I'm so incredibly proud to be part of this, uh, part of this amazing team. Uh, I want to thank all the committee members. We are tentatively planning for a public art committee meeting in August. We will not be meeting in July, although hopefully we will be meeting in person uh, because we've got several events that we'll be getting invitations to shortly. Uh, Chuck will be reaching out soon to confirm your availability uh, for the August meeting. And officially, this meeting is adjourned at 10.29. Have a wonderful and safe, uh, relaxing 4th of July weekend celebration, everybody. And thank you once again. I love seeing everyone smiling and engaged and really, you know, being truly involved. So I really look forward to working with you all uh, and have a wonderful, safe weekend. Thank you, everyone. Thank Thanks you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye. Thanks, everybody.